السلام عليكم <clears throat> today ان شاء الله we're going to continue our uh, lessons about uh, macroeconomics uh, we uh, studied uh, the previous lesson uh, the economic fluctuations uh, to uh, move to the next chapters about the aggregate demand aggregate supply and the is and uh, model as uh, you can see all the economic fluctuations in the world history the one that stands out as particularly large painful and intellectually significant is the great depression of the 1930s as we know uh, as during this time, the United States and many other countries experienced massive unemployment and greatly reduced incomes. In the worst year in this depression, in 1933, one fourth of the US labor force was unemployed and the real GDP was 30% below its 1929 level. <clears throat> so this is one of the, or the, the, uh, uh, wars or uh, uh, economic fluctuations in the world's uh, history. It's an example, yeah, I need to know what we are talking about, such kind of uh, economic fluctuations and increasing the unemployment and decreasing the GDP and the income and so on. So in this chapter, talk about economic fluctuations in the previous chapter in details in this chapter the is curve and uh, we will learn the is curve and its relation to the keynesian cross the loanable funds model and also the lm curve and its relation to the theory of liquidity preference and how the is lm model determines income and the interest rate in the short run when the price is fixed. <clears throat> so now we will see the IS curve, the, I, the LM curve, the IS curve uh, related to the Keynesian cross and the loanable fund model, as we will see, and also the LM curve related to the liquidity preference uh, series. And then we, can, we will see how the IS LM model determines the income and the interest rate in the short run when the price is fixed. So in chapter 10, introduce the model of the aggregate demand and aggregate supply. If you remember in the previous chapter, in the, the long run, uh, as we said, the prices are flexible, the output determined by factors of production and technology, and the unemployment equals its natural rate. But in the short run that we will study, prices are fixed, output determined by aggregate demand. If they're not flexible, not determined by the factors of production, the labor and the capital and technology and so on. No, the prices are fixed and the output determined by the aggregate demand and the unemployment negatively related to the output that we will see. So this chapter develops the ISLM model, the basis of the aggregate demand curve. We focus on the short run and assume the price level is fixed. So in this case, the short run aggregate supply curve is horizontal. In chapter in next in chapters 11 and 12, focus on the closed economy that we will start with chapter 11 and uh, for building the ISM model and chapter next uh, chapter, chapter 12, we will focus on the applying the ISM model and this is both together a uh, focus on the closed economy. In the 13th chapter, we will present the open economy case. So we continue our study of economic fluctuations by looking more closely at aggregate demand. Our goal is to identify the variables that shift the aggregate demand curve, causing fluctuations in national income. We also examine more fully the tools policymakers can use to influence the aggregate demand. So in this chapter, we see that government can influence aggregate demand 
with both monetary and physical policy. We know monetary policy related to the money supply and so on, and physical policy to the taxes and government spending. So let's know first what is the ISLM model. The two parts of the ISLM model are the IS curve and the LM curve. IS stands for investment and saving. Investment and saving. And the IS curve represents what's going on in the market for goods and services. If the IS is for investment and saving, and the IS curve represents what's going on in the market for goods and services. Okay? The LM stands for liquidity and money. Liquidity and money. And the LM curve represents what's happening to the supply and demand for money. So now we know what is IS, what is LM, what is the IS curve, the LM curve represents one represents uh, the market of goods and services and the other represents the supply and demand for money. So because the interest rate influences both investment and money demand, so it is the variable that links the two halves of the ISLM model. So we have a curve, which is IS related to the investment, and the curve, the LM related to the money, and the interest rate is the common a, a factor that, uh, or variable that links these two halves together, two curves together to make or to build the ISLM model. So the model shows how interactions between the goods and money markets determine the position and slope of the aggregate demand curve and therefore the level of national income in the short run. Again, the, this model shows how these interactions between the goods and money, between the IS curve and LM curve, determine the position and the slope of the aggregate demand curve. Okay, and therefore determine the level of the national income in the short run. Let's start with the first uh, section in our uh, lesson today, the goods market and the IS curve. It is related to what is called the Keynesian cross. The general theory, Keynes proposed that in the general theory uh, that the, uh, the economy's total income is the short run determined largely by spending plans of households, business, and government. The, the total income of the economy in the short run determined by the spending plans of the households business and the government so the more people want to spend the more goods and service firms can sell the more firms can sell the more the output they will choose to produce and the more workers they will choose to hire so Keynes believed that the problem during recessions and depressions is inadequate spending the Keynesian cross is an attempt to model this inside. It is all about a, about spending and consumption. So, in a simple closed economy model in which income is determined by expenditure, the, and according to uh, uh, Keynes, uh, we have the I, which is the planned investment, I for investment or planned investment, PE is a planned expenditure. Planned expenditure, as we know, it is a consumption is a, an uh, expenditure. The household expenditure is a consumption. The business expenditure is the investment. The government a expenditure is a G or G government spending, which is a called PE or planned expenditure. Why or the real GDP? is the actual expenditure, the actual expenditure. So the difference between the actual and the planned expenditure equals the unplanned inventory investment. This is a difference. We know that the Y 
uh, equals C plus I plus G. For sure, we don't have here the uh, net export or any because we are talking about a uh, closed economy model. We will see, we will add the uh, net export in chapter 13. So we're supposed to know that the Y equals C plus I plus G. What's happened here? What's the difference between the blend expenditure and the actual expenditure? The difference is the unplanned inventory investment. You remember the inventory investment? We will see in details. Elements of the Keynesian course. We have here the consumption function. As you know, uh, it is the uh, income minus the uh, tax and the government uh, policy variables. It is fixed here, the government spending and the taxes. For now, planned investment also is uh, fixed and the planned expenditures according to this, we can find C plus I plus G, but if we use the consumption function, so we have G and I and taxes is fixed, just B, Y. So the B, E, uh, to reach the equilibrium condition, the actual expenditure, which is Y, equals to the blend expenditure, which is a P. Okay, to graph, to make it simple, the blend expenditure, the B, E. Uh, we can see here the blend expenditure as a function of the income the blend expenditure in the vertical axis and the income in the horizontal uh, axis. Uh, it depends on the income because higher income leads to higher consumption. We are talking about blend expenditure, expenditure, spending money and so on. It depends on your income. When you have high income, you will have more expenditure, you will spend more money. Okay, which is part of the planned expenditure. The slope of the planned expenditure function is the MPC also, the marginal uh, propensity to consume. Okay, I'm graphing the equilibrium condition, the equilibrium condition. So we, we see here in the first one, the planned expenditure as a function of the income, it is a, the slope is about the MP, uh, C. Uh, when we talk about the equilibrium uh, condition, we have uh, for, uh, 45 degree uh, angle. So the Keynesian cross in this case, the equilibrium value of the income, we, we now here combine the two graphs, the two curves. Okay, the equilibrium in the Keynesian cross is the point at which income which is the actual expenditure, Y, equals the planned expenditure. This is the equilibrium uh, value of income. Again, with the Keynesian cross, the equilibrium in the Keynesian cross is the point at which income equals the expenditure, or the actual expenditure equals the planned expenditure. And this is uh, point. What if there is an increase in the government purchases? Mm -hmm. We have now G1, there is an increase, we support, there is an increase in the government spending or government purchasing. What will happen uh, in this case? You can see at Y1 for this amount of income, there is now an unplanned drop in the inventory. Okay, so firms, in this case, you can see here what's happening, increase the output because we have more government spending, more government purchases, government need to purchase more. So at this point, at the first point of the equilibrium, this one, Y1, there is a drop in the inventory. We don't have enough goods and so on. So the firms will increase the output. So the Y1 shifts to right to the Y2. And income rises toward a new equilibrium 
as you can see here, the uh, uh, curve shifts to the uh, above. And this is the change in the uh, output. So an increase in government choice in the Keynesian cross uh, raises the planned expenditure. <clears throat> this raises the planned expenditure by that amount for any given level of income. The equilibrium moves from point A, you can see this is the old equilibrium, to point B. And income rises from Y1 in the horizontal curve to Y2. You have to note that the increase in the income, the change in Y, exceeds the increase in government purchases. Thus, the physical policy has a multiplied effect on income. Now, the change in the government purchasing or G is one of the physical policies of the government. It's multiplied the, <coughs> the income. So we know this is the equilibrium condition, y equals c plus i plus g, and this also in the changes. And because i is exogenous in this case, so the MPC multiplied by the change in y plus the change in the g, because the change in c of consumption equals the MPC or the marginal propensity of consumption change of y, to collect the terms with the delta y or change in y on the left side of the equals <coughs> sign. So we can see that the change in uh, government spending equals the change in the income multiplied by one minus the MPC. Or we can know the, the, how to solve the uh, change, the amount of a change to how you know, to measure how much the change in the uh, income, it equals one uh, divided by the one minus MPC multiplied by the amount of a change of the government spending. So what is the government purchases multiplier? We, we know here, we saw how the uh, government purchases and physical policy can uh, affect the income. So the increase in income resulting from $1 increase in government spending. This is the government purchases multiplier. Any increase in income resulting from an increase or $1 increase in the government spending or G. So as we see in this model, the government purchases multiplier equals <clears throat> The, the change, the amount of change in income divided by the uh, uh, amount of a change in government uh, spending or the government purchases multipliers will equal one divided by one minus the MBC. For example, if the MBC here is 0 0.8, 8%, then it will be one divided by one minus 0.8, so it will equal Five, so an increase in government spending causes income to increase five times as much. Okay. So why the multiplier is greater than one? Initially, the increase in government spending causes an equal increase in Y, as we know. But when Y uh, or income increase, the consumption also increase. Okay. So the final impact on income is much bigger than the initial change in the government's purchases. For example, suppose the government spends an additional 100 million on defense. Then the revenues of defense firms increase by hundred million dollars, all of which becomes income to various groups. Some of it's paid uh, to the workers and engineers and managers, and the rest is profit paid as dividends to shareholders. Hence, the total income rises hundred million dollars 
uh, the change in the income equals million, hundred million dollars equal change in the government spend. Okay. The people whose income just rose by hundred million dollars are also consumers, and they will spend the fraction or the MPC of this extra income. Suppose the MBC is 0.8, so the consumption rises by 80 million dollars. To be concrete, suppose they buy 80 million dollars worth of Ford Explorers, for example. Then Ford sees its revenues increase by 80 million dollars, all of which becomes income to Ford's workers and shareholders. Okay, so the change in income in this case also will be 80 million dollars. These folks or these people spend the fraction uh, MBC 0.8 of it causing the change in consumption equals 64 million dollars. Okay. Uh, suppose they spend all the 64 million dollars on Hershey's chocolate bars, the ones with the mint cookie bits inside then Hershey Foods Corporation experienced a revenue increase of $64 million, which becomes income to the Hershey company owners and workers also. So at this point in the story, the total impact on income is $100 million plus $80 million plus $64 million, which is much bigger than the government's initial increase in spending. But this process continues, and the final impact on the income is $500 million because the multiplier is five. Okay. The same thing if we talk about taxes, if there is an increase in tax, initially the tax increase reduces the consumption, and tax increase reduces the consumption. At the First example, we saw how the G, if the government spending changed or increased. Okay, uh, in this case, we can see the C1 uh, or C, which will change as the tax. When the tax increase, the consumption will decrease. Therefore, the PE, it, we can see here, it will be the by minus the MPC and uh, Y1. There is now an unplanned inventory build up. There is a more inventory. So firms reduce their outputs. You can see the change here. And the income falls towards a new equilibrium. As you can see, Y1 changed to the left to Y. The same thing also here. We don't need to uh, waste more time how to uh, solve it but but why it with a uh, tax not the government uh, spending and tax multiplier also the same same uh, the change in income resulting from a one dollar increase in tax or decrease the one for example sure okay but tax multiplier usually is negative not like the government uh, uh, purchase multiplier a tax increase reduces the consumption, which reduces the income, and it is greater than one in absolute value. A change in taxes has a multiplier effect on income, and the tax multiplier is smaller than the government spending multiplier. As consumers save the fraction, one minus NBC of the tax cut. So the initial post <clears throat> in spending from a tax cut is smaller than from an equal increase in government spending. You can now try practice with the Keynesian uh, cross. This example, use the graph of Keynesian cross to show the effects of increase is in planned investment and the equilibrium level of the income or input. You can uh, practice this uh, after the lesson. The interest rate and investment and the IS curve. A graph of all combinations of interest rate and uh, uh, outputs <clears throat> that uh, results in goods market equilibrium. 
the actual expenditure, which is the output equals the planned expenditure. So the equation for the IS curve is as uh, we know here. So driving the <clears throat> IS curve in this case, we can see where the, uh, again, the uh, relation between the planned expenditure and income in the first A graph and the uh, interest rate and the income in the second graph. You can see here in R1, the interest rate, this uh, value of the interest rate in the equilibrium of the uh, income at this uh, point and the interest rate at this point. So <clears throat> when you have the uh, another interest rate or when the interest rate again you can see this we have now a new value of interest rate r2 it is a reduced okay when they are uh, interest rate reduced the investment increase when the incre investment increase we have new a pe also increased according to r2 in this equation so we will see uh, the how the change in the income the income a increase <coughs> for the investment increase so we have a new equilibrium so we can see here the is curve how it comes from again we now have in this graph the relation between the planned expenditure and the income and the equilibrium income here and also we have the relation between the interest rate and the income when you have a new interest rate in this case the investment will increase when the investment increase the planned expenditure increase and the output increase to a new point okay y1 shifts to right to shift y2 so we can see here how the is curve is built why the IS curve is negatively sloped? Because a fall in interest rate motivates firms to increase investment spending, which drives up total planned spending. Okay, again, a fall in interest rate motivates firms to increase investment spending, which drives up the total planned spending. Okay, and to restore the equilibrium in the goods market. <clears throat> the output or the actual expenditure must increase. So we can see here all the graphs uh, together. In this case, the uh, the investment function as an increase in the interest rates from R1 to R2 reduces the blend investment uh, from I, uh, R1 to IR2. And this is in the first uh, panel, the investment function here in panel A at the left uh, pillow. You can see an increase in the interest rate. We have lower planned uh, investments in this uh, case. If you move to the Keynesian cross in the uh, panel P, the expenditure and the uh, income or output, Okay, show the Keynesian cross a decrease in the planned investment from IR1 to IR2 shifts the planned expenditure function downwards, the red curve, and thereby reduces the income from Y1 to Y2. Okay, and then in panel C, the IS curve shows the IS curve summarizing this relationship between the interest rate and the income. At the higher the interest rate, the lower the level of the income. This is the conclusion. What the IS curve uh, will tell us that the IS curve summarized these changes in the goods market equilibrium as the when the interest rates uh, increase or higher, the lower the level of the income will be. What about the physical policy and the IS curve? We can use the ISLM model to see 
how fiscal policy as government spending and taxes affect the aggregate demand and the output. Let's start by using the Keynesian cross to see how fiscal policy shifts the IS curve. Also, an increase in government purchases shifts the IS curve outwards. You can see here, uh, an increase in government uh, purchases raises the planned expenditure. For any given interest rate, the upward shifts in planned expenditure of the change in government purchases leads to an increase in income. Okay, so in panel uh, P, you can see the I square shifts to the right by this amount as, as at any uh, value of interest uh, rate, the government purchases increase, the land expenditure increase, and the income uh, increase. So the IS curve shifts to the right, and the horizontal distance of the IS shifts equals. Okay. Another example with uh, uh, taxes. You can, uh, uh, but uh, it's uh, decreasing by shifting to the left. Okay, so uh, this was the uh, the first part of this lesson of this chapter, building the IS uh, model. We saw the uh, IS uh, curve. Um, okay, let's move now to the next uh, part, the theory of the liquidity uh, preferences the LM curve. Okay, the theory of the liquidity preference, a simple theory in which the interest rate is determined by money supply and money demand. Just as Keynesian cross is building a block of the IS uh, curve, the theory of liquidity preference is also a building block in the LM curve. The money supply, as we know, the supply of real money balances is uh, fixed. You can see the relation between the interest rate and the real money uh, balances. Now the uh, real money balances is uh, fixed, okay? The demand for real money uh, balances which is the L for uh, liquidity here, the interest rate adjusts in the vertical axis, the interest rate adjusts to equate the supply and the demand for money. Okay, so we can see here the uh, equilibrium interest rates. So we have the real money balance or the supply of the money is fixed in this case, and the uh, demand for uh, money is uh, vertical. The, uh, the, uh, the supply and demand for real money balances determine the interest rate as we know. Uh, so the supply curve for real money balances is vertical because supply doesn't depend on the interest rate. The demand curve is downward sloping because a higher interest rate raises the cost of holding money. Again, if the supply curve is vertical because the supply of money doesn't depend on the interest rate. But the demand curve is a downward sloping because higher interest rate raises the cost of holding money and thus lowers the quantity demanded. So at the equilibrium interest rate, the quantity of real money balances demanded equals the quantity supply. Okay. So how the central banks raises the interest rate? 
to increase the interest rates, they reduce the money supply. So <clears throat> this A, according to the supply and demand curve, you can see when the money supply increase, the interest rate will decrease. A reduction in money supply in the theory of liquidity preference. If the price level is fixed, a reduction in the money supply from one, M1 to M2, as we saw, uh, reduces the supply of real money balances at the equilibrium interest rate, therefore rises from R1 to R2. Okay, you can see this case study in the uh, textbook. Okay, because of time. Now, income, money demand, and the LM curve. Let's see. Now, let's put the income back into the money demand function. The LM curve is a graph of all combinations of interest rate and outcome uh, income that equate the supply and demand for real money balances so the equation for lm curve will be like this so how to derive or build the lm curve a we have the market of real money uh, balance and in panel b we have the lm curve. <clears throat> okay now we have the supply of the money and the demand of uh, money on this interest rate, as we saw Ardo in the IS curve, the interest rate is the variable that determines the amount of income. Okay, that is what ISLM model all about. So now we have here the equilibrium interest rate in panel A, and this is also here the interest rate when the income increases in this. Uh, case the money demand uh, increases now the interest rates will move to another equilibrium and the lm curve will be up slow so so uh, in panel a as we see show the market for real money balances an increase in income from y1 to y2 raises the demand for money and thus raises the interest rate from r1 to r2 an increase in income raises the demand for money and this raises the interest rate from r1 to r2 okay in panel p shows the lm curve summarizing this relationship between interest rate and the income the higher the level of income the higher the interest rate why it is upward sloping? Because an increase in income raises the money demand. Since the supply of real balances is fixed, there is now excess demand in the money market at the initial interest rate. The interest rate must rise to restore equilibrium in the money market. Okay. So we can see here if there is change in the money supply will shift the LM curve as the reduction in the money supply shifts the LM curve upward. As you can see in panel one shows that for any given level of income, a reduction in money supply raises the interest rate that equilibrates the money market. Therefore, the LM curve in panel B shifts upward. And again, the federal or the central bank reduces the money supply. So this raises the interest rate. Then the LM curve will shift upward. You can try this example also when increasing the money supply. The short run equilibrium. Uh -huh. Now we have the uh, Keynesian cross. At the above, okay, represents the IS curve and the liquidity preference that represents the LM curve. This is called the short run equilibrium. 
short drug is the combination of R and Y, the interest rate and the income. That, at the same time, satisfied the equilibrium conditions in the goods and money markets. So we have the equilibrium interest rate that satisfied the equilibrium conditions in goods and money markets, in goods markets and money markets. So we have, according to these two curves and this model, the equilibrium interest rate and the equilibrium level of income. To see the big picture, we have the Keynesian cross, as you know, represents the IS curve. And the theory of liquidity preference represents the LM curve, and both uh, build the ISLM model that give us the aggregate demand curve and aggregate supply curve. They are the model of the aggregate demand and aggregate supply <clears throat> and gives us explanation of short run fluctuations in our economy. So at the end of this chapter, <clears throat> uh, sorry for the next chapter, we will see about how to use the ISL uh, model to analyze the impact of policies and shocks and learn how to the aggregate demand curves comes from the ISL model and how to use ISL and get demand and get supply models together to analyze the short run and long run effects of shocks and how to use our models to learn about the great depression. Now we'll finish chapter 11 or how to build the uh, ISL model. Uh, to summarize this, we saw at the beginning the Keynesian cross, basic model of income determination, takes fiscal policy and investment as exogenous. Fiscal policy has a multiplier effect on income, as we saw if the government purchases or taxes increased or reduced, how it affects the income. Also the IS curve, which comes from this Keynesian cross when planned investment depends negatively on the interest rate shows all the combinations of interest rate and income that weight planned expenditure with actual expenditure on goods and services. We see also the theory of liquidity preference and the basic model of interest rate determination takes money and supply, the money supply and price level as exogenous, exogenous and increase in the money supply lower the interest rate and uh, the LM curve comes from the liquidity preference theory with a win a money demand depends positively on the income, shows all the combinations of interest rate and income that equate demand for real money balances with uh, supply. Also the ISLM uh, model, the intersection of the IS and LM curves show the unique points of income and interest rate that satisfies the equilibrium in both goods markets and money markets. Okay, now we finished this chapter. See you next uh, lesson, inshallah. Uh, goodbye and good.